Hi everyone, welcome to the Daily Dose podcast. This is the podcast where we pick out things from the news and social media that's interesting to us as entrepreneurs and as business nerds. I'm James and I'm joined by my co-host Marcelo. Hi James. So uh, I found a couple of tweets um, on Twitter that were on the more motivational side of the uh, spectrum and obviously one thing when you're working for yourself or when you're starting a business or you're doing ent- anything entrepreneurial, you tend to need, you need a personality type where you've got more sort of personal motivation, more get up and go. You need to be able to self-motivate a lot more than you do sometimes in other sort of forms of work when you've got a pointy headed boss who's shouting at you and telling you to do things. Um, so it's quite important to try and spend a bit of time thinking about in your own head, like where your own, um, thought processes come from where your own motivation comes from and things like that and and try and find people and examples of uh, business people uh, and model yourself after how they operate and how they think about things that can be really helpful you know fake it till you make it so these ones caught my eye in particular the first one um, was a guy called uh, Julian Shapiro and he tweeted out and he said the most accomplished people I know share three traits number one a bias towards taking action no lazy deferring Number two, always looking for new resources to leverage. And number three, regularly reassessing priorities without fear of changing them. The key is they perfectly balance work with indulging curiosity. Um, I thought this summed up um, some sort of three really key angles that you need to have mentally when doing these, uh, when when sort of operating as a self-operator, starting small businesses, being an entrepreneur. Um, What did you think, Marcelo, when you saw this one? Yes, so I, I agree what, on what you said. Um, you need to be driven for sure as entrepreneurs uh, and, and long term as well. Um, so I would say you shouldn't be all, always looking for inspiration. It should, it should, uh, you should focus on what you want to achieve and that's on the bias to take action. So it's really important as an, as an entrepreneur and it could be a very lonely uh, journey as well. Uh, for prolonged periods of time so um, so that's fine so you should be cool if you're feeling that it's uh, overwhelming at some times or you are a bit lost that's fine as well so every entrepreneur is lost uh, many times uh, or most of the time <laughs> sometimes so uh, you should be comfortable with that so so after you understand that you're comfortable uh, the the fact of taking action or being biased to take action. So uh, within the, this chaos that is going on or uncertainty as well, that it's almost always going on, uh, on what to do next, or is this the right thing to do, et cetera. So, and it could be for entrepreneurship or in life in general. So it's better, you shouldn't be paralyzed uh, because of that. It's better to take action um, and then learn from that. Uh, so, so then you should measure, of course, which actions you are taking. And if you fail, it's fine because you learned. So, um, so you should be, you, you should have a, a huge appetite to um, learn and and discover things uh, because that's kind of your uh, competitive advantage as well. So you will learn things that others don't, and then you can do things with more information as well. So, of course. Failing is fine, so you should be comfortable with that. Um, but uh, you want to fail the less possible. So it's better to learn from someone else's mistakes than from your own. So it will be less painful and less costly for sure. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, certainly uh, you should keep um, curiosity uh, to, to, to learn stuff and you should take action so you accelerate this feedback loop process uh, that gives you more information and eventually more confidence as well. And and you will start seeing results uh, to come through. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, so when, when I read this, um, you know, I, I struggle with some of these things definitely. And I, I actively have to work on on, uh, reminding myself a lot of these things. It's, as you said, it's so easy to get lost in the weeds. Um, You know, when, when everything's on fire around you and problems are cropping up and all kinds of stuff, it can be very hard to sort of take yourself out of that and have an objective, objective view on stuff. Um, I think, um, I think he's picked three really interesting angles on these, on this particular topic. Um, I would, 
I, I sometimes find it useful to like re restate what someone's saying in a different way. So trying to get to the sort of underlying meaning of what it is that someone's saying. So when, so taking each in turn, number one, bias towards taking action, no lazy deferring. Um, I think this speaks to like procrastination and procrastination often comes from like fear of consequences. But I think one way of overcoming procrastination and making sure that you're continuously taking action and moving forward, it's momentum as much as anything, right? Is to realize that most decisions you take are reversible. So if a decision is relatively easily reversible, there's, there's very little downside to taking a decision and just heading off in that direction until you receive information to the contrary, in which case you can backtrack and do whatever. And even, even in the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is that you've wasted that time. Once you've taken that decision and moved on it, it allows you mentally to release yourself and move on to the next decision and move on to the next decision and so on and so on. And, it, and very few decisions are actually irreversible. You know, they tend to be the class of dropping loads and loads of money on this thing over here, or, you know, I'm going to amputate an arm so that I can run faster. You know, you can't reverse that. But most other decisions you can, like hiring someone, um, choosing a marketing channel, do you know all of those things are, are reversible with relatively little downside. So that's that's how I'd look at you know decisions are, are reversible. So you should be taking them and don't worry about the consequences so much. Number two, always looking for new resources to leverage. This is uh, the way I'd restate. This is oftentimes you can get blinkered like the horses into sort of like following a path. Um, and because you're so focused and concentrated on that path, you don't stop to take stock of where you are and what resources you've got available to you and how you might be able to do things differently. And so I think this is, you know, you can look at this uh, uh, from the perspective of a, a kind of a, make sure that if you're deep in the weeds that you take some time to come up and take a breath and actually look at the bigger picture every now and again, then go back in and be very deliberate about that practice because it can be so easy to get into the weeds, recognize when you're in the weeds and, you know, set yourself a calendar or an alarm or something, make a routine to actually sort of come up and look at the bigger picture and have a look around and say, well, okay, well, what else is out there that I could bring to bear on this that I haven't thought about? What are other people doing? Like you said about learning and, and seeing how other people are doing things. And for number three, the way I'd restate that, so is regularly reassess priorities without fear of changing them. Um, I think that's related to the decision-making thing, which is, okay, originally when we started doing this thing, we took this decision in a certain context. The world was a certain way. We had a certain amount of money. There was, you know, customers were doing certain things, but stuff changes, right? And so you need to make sure that the decision all makes sense in the new context of where you are. Has anything changed about the world or about the way you do business between when you took the decision to now? And you shouldn't cling on to it's sunk cost fallacy, right? It's like you, you should make your decisions in the context in which they currently present themselves, not how it was. Okay, you may have dropped a load of money on this thing over here, but that's no reason to continue down that path or continue dropping money on it if the context no longer makes any sense. Um, yeah, so that's how I would that's how I find it useful. When you read this kind of advice and information, it's like, how would you restate these things to yourself to, to make sense to you? Do you, do you sort of under, understand the underlying thing they're, they're trying to get at? Um, on that basis, there was another really great tweet that I saw from a guy, um, Sahail, I believe his name is Sahail Doshi, but he goes by just Sahail on um, Twitter. And he's the founder of Mixpanel, uh, which is analytics SaaS software. Um, and he said, how to keep momentum whilst working hard. Don't burn out, pick fun projects. Don't be a single point of failure. Spread your knowledge, delegate, fire yourself from boring jobs, pair on projects, don't get stuck. Take staycations, solve the little problems first. So what I liked about this was he's emphasizing this thing again of like momentum, bias towards taking action, you know, be be busy with purpose, but he's then offering a whole bunch of sort of like little tips and tricks, which can help you maintain that momentum over time and make sure you don't sort of trip up and get uh, stuck on anything. Was there anything from that list, which sort of stands out to you from your experience? Uh, yeah. So I agree on, on, especially on the taking on the little problems first, it will make a lot of difference. 
And I will also, um, so either in business or in life, so any venture or entrepreneurship in, in, in general is uh, not only a business career, but a personal development as well. So there is so much you need. You don't only need to improve the business processes, you need to improve yourself a lot. And like with any relationship, it's like with marriage, even if you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Um, uh, so yeah, you may not like many things. You may uh, feel, uh, yeah, uncomfortable at times or, or uncertain, uh, confused. Um, so, but, or, or especially on, like on long relationships or marriage, uh, or if you have kids and so on. Um, so, so it's not like walking away. Yeah, it's in business as well. You you just can't, as a founder, walk away that uh, because uh, it needs you the business. So, so you need to learn how to manage uh, that expectation and but also the internal um, burnout at some point where that um, uh, the tweet was referring to. So, uh, and you will ultimately all your feelings or, or thoughts are, uh, could be manipulated by yourself. So I would say don't look elsewhere what uh, like for input, uh, just look for input about constructive uh, information uh, or critical uh, information that can make you um, progress, but ultimately you have the key so and the moment you know that and you can grow so let's say you uh so start taking by smaller problems so of course if you have too many of those it could feel overwhelming but if you tackle each of them individually and you start solving them then you will uh, and then you will see that many problems on the road are similar so are not exactly the same but they're similar so you will know already how to cope with them and you build all these resilience uh, from a mental and emotional point of view. Uh, also, if you feel you are uh, something is really not working out for many reasons, like um, and classic you know, business cycles, processes, examples. So when you're trying to scale, but then you are doing way too much, so you have no more time and you feel all overwhelmed because your margins are tight, but you really work hard, but it's not really paying for what you need. So you don't have money to hire someone else because uh, you can barely pay for yourselves. So what do you do? So you are kind of stuck and what should I do? And, uh, and, but you cannot quit. And so it's really, you know, it's like you are going in circles. Uh, again, um, you should uh, probably look uh, one at a, at a higher level just get a step, uh, go a step back from your day-to-day -day stuff and think, all right, so if it, this is not gonna scale this way, how we will look a way that it can scale or what will be the ideal solution? And then you, you will think, oh, I will need this or that. And then you say, okay, but I don't have money. But then, okay, but then if you were to go raise money, what would be, so how can you make a business plan that's investable for a third party? And so then you start focusing more on how to rebuild or rearrange uh, the current infrastructure you have, because you have some sales, uh, you have some track record, some expertise. So you need to identify which people can complement you possibly uh, to help you grow, um, what you would need to delegate at the less possible cost, um, what's the minimum investment that you would need then look for so you 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 break it down uh, like a big problem that it doesn't seem to have a solution then you need to be um, you know more cold minded probably um, pragmatic uh, and just don't look you're not gonna find probably uh, a solution like a mass magic solution uh, out of the box for complex problems but you can break it down and surely uh, enough that each individual uh, item will have uh, plenty of options so uh, it's coming back to the previous topic we were talking in this podcast on um, yeah so how to tackle 
uh, how, how to identify the resources, how to leverage uh, resources that you may not be aware. Uh, so the more you leverage stuff you have, um, so instead of doing all yourself, you do some yourself and leverage with le leverage could assets could be either uh, business contacts, people you know, um, yeah. So your network, uh, of course, money is, is is a resource as well. Time is a resource. So um, yeah, so you can leverage on on networks from someone else's as well for marketing, promotion, distribution. So um, so yeah get help in that sense or leverage your resources and grow them uh, so you don't feel overwhelmed and too much pressured into a single thing uh, and it will be liberating i mean um yeah and but of course uh, you will still need to go through hardships uh on anything i mean business in general entrepreneurship life and it will be uh yeah certainly a personal development journey you will need to build up patience as well so there is no get rich quick uh, path to success we know all that um, so anyone telling you that just run away from it um, yeah so you need to build uh, that uh, endurance uh, to, uh, to also uh, on this mindset to overcome adversity and overcome challenges and just if you get used to that um, it's how you need to train yourself uh, to solve problems and not to be overwhelmed, to feel cool when, 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 when shit happens, you know, uh, and step back uh, and take action as well. Just don't overthink, but pick things simple, uh, things that you really, can't, you really can improve now uh, and take it from there. Yeah, I think... Uh, so reading between the lines of what he's saying there, then, I mean, he is, you know, not that I'm a psychologist, but he, it sounds to me like he's the sort of personality type who wants to brute force his way through problems. I, .e. if you're getting stuck on something or if he's getting stuck on something, then his, his sort of personality type temptation is to just go harder and harder and harder and work longer and longer and longer and, and just try and sort of absolutely grind your way through and which in some ways is the opposite personality types of sort of procrastination but that the solution to both things are similar which is be be self-aware enough to know that when you are doing that and that you know being busy for being busy sake is not you know work it's not moving you forward and that often the way out is as you were saying try and find other people to help you out try and find other resources look at different ways of doing it and just be aware in actual fact taking a small break and then coming back to it refreshed you will probably make better progress on it than if you just try and sort of pull an all-nighter and go crazy i'm sure everyone has got that uh, experience of where you've got some exam coming up in the morning so you spend all night just trying to cram all the stuff you should have been learning weeks before into your head overnight and it doesn't tend to go so well so <laughs> You know, this is this is the sort of work or the entrepreneurship equivalent of that. Right. OK, that's all we've got for you today. Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back next week with some more nuggets of knowledge. In the meantime, please do check out our YouTube channel, which is where we post this and our other podcasts. You can search for net workers, two words, or find the link that's in the show notes. Uh, if you're interested in a deeper dive into all things entrepreneurial, including more detailed information, help, mentorship courses, please do check out our website. And that is at networkers.co. See you all next time. Thank you. Bye.